is on board the ship there and uh, he has traversed e Europe. And so he's been back and forth uh, all over uh, Europe and he's gonna be able to share with us uh, about that uh, today. We have uh, an interview with uh, some folks who just got back from uh, River Cruise. Uh, they'll be our live interview guests. They were uh, uh, very excited about what was going on and can't wait to tell you and share uh, what happened there. We have our very first interview from the Turkey Gullet. Uh, now, uh, you've not seen this, but that's the private cruise that you can do uh, during or after uh, or before one of the Turkey uh, trips. Uh, so I'll let them tell you about it, uh, but that you're going to enjoy that a lot. Uh, and then we have a Holy Land update that we're going to be uh, sharing that a little bit later uh, in our conversation today. James will be talking with us about that. Uh, James and I visited with the uh, Director General of the Ministry of Tourism on Tuesday of this week. Uh, I was in Atlanta. James was, uh, I guess, suffering away in Santorini, if I remember correctly, or somewhere uh, like that. But I was able to do somewhere it. like that. Somewhere like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm not sure where exactly James was, but uh, he was able to join us. And so we've got the latest and greatest uh, information from from Israel too. That everybody's going to want to know. There's some some things that are changing there. And I think you'll be excited about as we see some travel beginning to resume in different parts. So we're really excited to have all the folks today with us. Uh, we are uh, going to be first talking with uh, Paul Syke and Mark Hurd, uh, who just got back from uh, uh, a river cruise there. And so uh, Mark, why don't you start us out if you don't mind and just tell us where were you and why you decided to take this cruise? Well, thanks, Tom, for having us today. We appreciate it very much. The, we, we were real excited to go to the Prague pre-tour uh, for three days, and then we took the Danube River cruise and caught the cruise ship there in Wiesenhofen, uh, Bavaria, Germany, and then uh, went down the Danube, the beautiful Danube, Blue Danube River, as Paul would sing to us later on in the cruise. Uh, so, so we really in, really had a great time traveling down through uh, four different countries and five counting the Czech Republic. Wow. So what made you decide you want to do this cruise, Mark? Well, I'd always heard about river cruises, and many of my friends had told me how much fun it was. And you can see from our photos, we had a great time there. There's my wife, Debbie, and Passau, and our friends in, in uh, 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 Prague eating lunch, but uh, we've always wanted to go. Everybody has told us how neat it is to go on a river cruise and unpack once. And of course, the Danube is a premier place to go. And of course, I've traveled with EO several times to the Holy Lands and everything's been so great. And to, uh, to Oberammergau uh, and also to Turkey. So I knew that the folks at EO would do a great job with uh, Mark Boston and Mark Yeh and, and uh, Armand and uh, Garrett and all the help that we have from educational opportunities. So it was a no brainer for me. Great. So, so Paul, uh, now I know that you are a traveler, well traveled, 200 days a year. You said that you used to travel uh, when you were doing concerts all over. What, what did you know us about uh, Europe and, and the steps of, the officials have taken there in light of COVID? Um, well, at first with the traveling uh, that I used to do, traveling seemed to be easy. And I'll be honest that when we first uh, were setting out on this cruise, I had a little bit of hesitancy of how things would be because I did not want the luster and the beauty of the trip to be, uh, I guess you could say mask behind the mask, so to say. But what I found uh, that it did not hinder any of the experiences that we had. Um, there were safety precautions taken with wearing the mask uh, when you were on the tour bus or possibly in the restaurants. But in the open air and walking through the cathedrals and many things, nothing was hindered by it. And not at uh, any time did you feel like maybe uh, a fearful feeling of COVID in any way at all? Good, 
Good. So, Mark, did you feel that uh, that the COVID policies affected your experience at all? Well, it was a little little bit of uh, going through the airports and those type of things, Tom, is, is a little bit uh, tedious. But after we got through the airports and the air travel, it was it was uh, just going in. Some of the restaurants, we needed to wear a mask for most of them when we went inside. But like Paul said, we were outside most of the time. And, uh, of course, when we were on the on the Amacerto, we were uh, usually sitting down for dinner or, or drink. So, of course, we didn't need to wear a mask then. So uh, after we got off the airplane, it wasn't much trouble. Well, what did your uh, guests, Mark, most enjoy about the cruise? What did they share with you was the best moment? Well, I talked to a friend of mine yesterday who, who uh, was – was in building science. And of course he loved the architecture and how they built the, all the buildings back after World War II. But I also talked to many and I think the, the crews, the people that we met were so neat. Uh, most of the cruise ship uh, service people were uh, <laughs> Romanians. So they had been, been under communism. And then our, our tour director was uh, Miriam who lived in the Czech, Czechoslovakia, which of course became the Czech Republic in Slovakia. And then our tour guide in Slovakia, the tour guides were also good and they were local, but they expressed how, how uh, getting their freedom was so uh, valuable to them. And I, of course I knew, all, I knew all the history of that, but it's amazing hearing those stories from people and seeing those people with a smile on their face that were so happy that they were living in a free society and uh, economically as well as freedom to work where they wanted to and that type of thing. It was, to me, that was a, a real inspirational uh, part of the trip. And they were so, so kind to us and so nice and you could tell they were enjoying life a lot more than they had in their childhood. Right. Great. Well, now, having Paul on board the ship with you, did that change the tenor? Did that make the cruise unique a little bit? It did. Uh, Paul is so talented with not only singing, but playing the piano. Uh, it's just, he's such a talent and provided us uh, wonderful entertainment. And we all enjoyed Paul's, uh, uh, I'll say, on the verge of genius. Uh, but we really enjoyed traveling with Paul and his, and his mother got to come with him this time. I know his, his nine-year-old son and wife had to stay home, but his mother got to come and uh, we, were, we enjoyed traveling with Paul and his mother. Great. Well, you know, Paul, it's amazing what stays on the ship or what happens on the ship doesn't stay on the ship, okay? I mean, let's be <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, It's just totally opposite from that. So, so we've heard that you have some good stories from conversations at dinner. Uh, yes. Might be willing to share with us. Uh, well, one of the ones that is uh, so unique, and it was wonderful to be able to bring my mom. That was part of her bucket list, uh, was to travel this area uh, for her love of music. And uh, one evening at dinner, we sat with uh, two ladies from Jupiter, Florida, and their nicknames were Mig and Babs. So it took us, it didn't take long to get uh, to know them uh, just from their nicknames. But uh, as my mom expressed uh, many times is we started with being acquaintances at the first dinner and by the last dinner, best friend. Mm -hmm. And it was real unique uh, to listen to Midge and Babs. They were talking about their parents and how history and traveling and different things and come to find out that Midge's father and my grandfather were both in the same troop, the army troop in the Philippines. Wow. And had no idea until they were laughing and joking about being from the South and being in the army and traveling and come to find out, wait a minute, they were in the same troop together in the Philippines. Uh, which was truly wonderful. And then, of course, we laughed because we originally thought they were from New Jersey, but talking history family, they were from the South. So we were laughing at dinner about 
do you think it would be proper if we sop up the gravy with the biscuit? <laughs> so, we laughed about many things because you're sitting here with this finest dinner, which the food was amazing, and trying to be so, you know, correct with your etiquette, and you're wanting to just grab that roll and sop up the gravy. So it was really wonderful uh, with those conversations over the table. So many, many laughs and many relationship, relationships that were built um, that have continued. Uh, uh, with phone calls and emails, which is really wonderful. That's cool. That's really cool. Glad that that was such a, a bonding experience for you guys. So, because you've been with us on cruises before, uh, you've done our celebration cruises mm -hmm. uh, as a musician. Uh, uh, how, how did that compare to your river cruise experience? Um, well, it's always wonderful because um, what I love about educational opportunities is the way they bring the groups together. And uh, yes, we have the tour times and the dinner times, but we have a gathering time to be able to share music. The venues are different. Um, on the Celebration Cruise, we're in this huge, gorgeous theater. Uh, when we went to Cuba, it was a little smaller theater, but it was uh, still a beautiful gathering place. What was really special about uh, this trip was on the River Cruise, you're practically sitting at water level. The land is not very far from you. And as I was sharing music, um, we had just been to the places that I was singing about. I mean, you're singing Sound of Music after you had just returned from looking at the cathedral where the wedding scene was videoed. Um, and so it was very intimate. Uh, we were in the lounge uh, this time you were they had cocktails. Uh, it was great because I even had some of the crew jump up behind me as we were sharing about where we had just seen uh, where Silent Night, uh, Christmas hymn that we sing often, um, we had just seen where that was composed, the words and the tune. And then here's some of the crew holding up Christmas ornaments that dance behind me. And so it was just a wonderful, intimate setting. Uh, all of the cruises have been wonderful, but this one was very intimate. And that's what made it very, very special. So as a musician, what was it like touring some of these world-renowned cities and sites related to music? Um, as I always tell people that it's, it's one thing to read about it, uh, to listen to it, but to stand where it happened. Uh, walk in and look at a choir loft in a cathedral uh, where Haydn uh, started out as a uh, boy in the choir. Uh, to be in Vienna and in Salzburg and see where Mozart was inspired to compose these things, it brings the music to life. And for me, uh, I had been to Vienna before and there's a little area where uh, Beethoven and uh, Haydn and uh, in a square, there's four of them buried. And literally you want to just lie on the ground and roll around in the grass and just absorb all the music. Um, but it is truly, uh, I came back even more inspired than I thought I could be. Uh, it just literally takes your breath away to know that music that has affected so many generations was composed and inspired by the place where you are standing. Great, great. So, so Mark, now, this part of Europe is a, a land of the Bible, but how did this cruise on the Danube uh, affect you or impact you spiritually? Well, I, me I mentioned the former communist uh, uh, countries that we went through and the and the crew, including Miriam, our tour director, she talked about how her grandfather uh, had had to uh, watch what he did because he didn't want to lose his job and everything. When she was eight years old, she got freedom. We heard the same type story with, from Bratislava, from the tour guide there, that she, when she was in college, she wanted to go, uh, when they got their freedom, she wanted to go with her friends across to Austria. And her dad told her, oh, no, don't do that. They'll arrest you. It's just a trick. And that was really touching for me that, that uh, and she said she went ahead and went the next morning with her friends. And they, the 
the guard had a smile on his face. And the first time she'd ever seen a guard with a smile on his face. And she said she and her friends went back five times that day across the border just for their freedom. And, you know, as I said, we, we've all know those, uh, the history of that, but it's amazing when people have been touched by that. And I think, you know, I was, I was really touched by those, uh, those things of us that our liberty and freedom that we take for granted growing up in America. Uh, those people didn't, and they, and they had a smile on their face while we were cruising. And, and of course, Paul uh, helped that out with the music and the, and the history of, uh, you know, Vienna and the beauty of Vienna and Budapest, you know, world capitals, as well as Prague. Uh, you know, uh, it's, I love architecture. I love architecture and I love history and I love, you know, the Christian church. And uh, so that, that was, uh, was what I enjoyed the most, that and just the friendships that we met and, and traveling with uh, 12 of my closest friends from here in Decatur, Alabama. Great. So talking about your friends, as they reflect, did they, were they moved spiritually? Have they, have they shared anything with you about that? Well, they mentioned that, uh, I know we got up in uh, Wiesenhofen and we were leaving out the Sunday morning after we had the Oktoberfest uh, on Saturday night and the village was there was real quiet uh, on Sunday morning. And, you know, it has a nice, beautiful church there, but not many people going to church. I think people were resting, but I don't think they maybe were taking the Sabbath to rest, but I'm not sure whether they were going to church or not. So uh, uh, some commented on that, you know, they were uh, what the attendance or what the interest was in, in the different church organizations of different uh, faiths that were in the community. And I think, I think they took note of that, Tom, uh, mm -hmm. that that's something I know one of the ladies said, you know, I hope we never lose that uh, uh, desire to go to church every Sunday morning as most, most of these friends of mine do. So, so Paul, for you, um, what would you say to musicians uh, about taking a Danube cruise? We've got a we've got a fam trip coming up for uh, choir directors, and that will be going to Vienna and Prague in, in February. But what what would you encourage them to do to visit these places? Um, one thing that I found uh, made it even uh, more special was that I took the time to prepare for the trip. Now preparing for the trip can be making sure we got right clothing and that type of thing. But in preparing to share uh, my music time, I knew some of the music. I went to school, bachelor's, master's degrees and studying for, you know about Mozart and different things, but um, to go back and specifically look at some of the places that you're going to be visiting, to look back at the history and remind yourself um, that Haydn was the boys' choir at this cathedral, um, to remind yourself about the requiem that Mozart wrote uh, on his deathbed and the area that he lived during that time and the fact that you're going to see that, it makes it more special because you've refreshed your memory uh, of these places. And to also allow yourself as a musician to take in, a lot of times the architecture can, you get so caught up in looking at that, you don't take moments to just be still. And even though that, will be silent in the cathedral. There were many times that I would just sit by myself and, I, and I'm a crier. I'd be the first to admit being a musician, I'm a crier. There were moments that I sat in that cathedral and still to this day, choking up now thinking about it. I sat there and I thought, this is music that was written that can only be God inspired. Mm. And so I, as we look at the classical music, a lot of times we don't, 
necessarily associate the God inspired part of it, but it all was God inspired. And um, and speaking of that, of musicians also is to develop the relationships of the people around you. I want to take a quick second when you were talking about the relationships, there was a lady on the ship as we were leaving uh, that was with one of the groups and she was with educational opportunities and she handed me a letter and it's just a short little letter here. It says, Paul, thank you. And I didn't know her when we first got on the ship. It says, Paul, thank you so much for your insight and energy. You have made me realize that it's okay to fill my heart with music and to cry when my heart is overflowing. I truly believe that I can go back now to my church roots, the Methodist church, and I can begin to love and be active in my church again. You and your mom have been a joy to fill a space in my soul when I didn't realize there was one that existed. Any challenge to life that is ahead of me, I know it is going to be okay. Thank you for sharing your space with those of us who welcomed that energy and love. And a thank you to Educational Opportunities for now introducing me to my new family. Wow, great, great. Well, well Paul and Mark, thank both of you for sharing with us today for, um, for, those, for those moments uh, that we're able to connect with each other and with, with everyone. And, uh, and I look forward to traveling with, with both of you here really soon. And uh, I don't think we'll probably have a problem getting you guys to, to register for a, another river cruise. It doesn't sound. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we appreciate Kim and everybody, Ryan, everybody helping, Tom. Yes. Great. Great. Well, we look forward to it again. We're, we're, as you can see, we're losing daylight with James. We're, uh, John, John Wayne, one of my heroes, said, boys, we're burning daylight. Uh, so uh, we don't want to burn up all of James's daylight there. So, so uh, I'm going to switch this over to James real quickly here and, and jump ahead on, in my schedule just a little bit. But James, the last time I remember seeing you on a cruise ship, we were in the Caribbean, if I remember correctly, and it was like 5,000 degrees out on that balcony. Yeah, it, it absolutely was. So the weather there is better, I take it. The weather here was low 70s, sunny uh, today, uh, gentle breeze in uh, Rhodes, Greece, which you can see behind me. Um, and just to orientate you, the, the port is here over my right shoulder. And then in the distant background, uh, you can see Turkey. So we're, we're Rhodes is very close to the uh, Turkish coast. Great. So um, you're back in Turkey, back on a, a cruise, a, a journey to Paul Cruise, right? This is the first yep. time in a while. I, this is the first time in a couple of years uh, that we've been able to operate one of our journeys of Paul Cruises. Uh, so it's exciting to be back here. Um, Roads today was very, very, had very few tourists but the shopkeepers and everyone were hopeful for next year and, and more and more business. But, uh, you know, it, it's just wonderful to be here. And tomorrow we're, well, probably an hour and a half, we'll be on our way to Kushadasi, uh, Turkey. And Turkey just opened their ports because uh, they had the sea lanes closed during COVID. So we're going to be one of the first ships uh, back in Turkey as well. So, uh, so that'll be exciting tomorrow. Well, that, that will be pretty cool to be one of the first ones back because uh, yeah. I love going to Kushidashi and, and to Ephesus and, and seeing there. So, um, so folks, on I think we have a little video from Rhodes today that the team okay. can uh, play just to give, give a little taste of what we're doing here on our journeys to Paul Cruz. I think. Okay, uh, this is the talk us about it. the the castle of the the Grand Master that you're seeing here, and uh, our groups did a, a three hour walking tour today, including uh, the castle. Uh, there you can see one of the groups there and the archaeological museum. So, uh, a lot of history here. Paul came to Rose. It was a stopover point uh, on the way to the Holy Land. 
And uh, you can see a little footage here from uh, the marketplace and, you know, some of the streets around roads. And the, the walls of the old city literally come right up to the, uh, to the harbor. So uh, it's just a gorgeous place. And, um, you know, and uh, so we're sitting here looking to my right, uh, right at the walls of the old city. And, and Tom, I would say we have a, we have a great, great lecturer on this cruise. And, and that's so important to our journeys of Paul and our Bible lands experiences. Yeah, we, we always amazed it. And, you know, being retired now, it's always uh, when I go to the lectures thinking, darn, I could have used that in a sermon, could have used that in a sermon. So, uh, so I don't get to preach much anymore. So I, uh, but I write all those little notes down because I, I love hearing everybody bring something different. It seems to the table, James. Absolutely. So, um, and, and some great musical entertainment here, not, not Paul Syke level. But uh, so they really have a, a good group here as far as entertainment goes. Great, great. Well, we're, we're, ex we're excited about it. We've got some great 2022, fall 2022, Paul Cruises, Bible Land Cruises. Uh, registration is out there. The early discounts are, uh, early registration discounts are expiring soon on those. So uh, if you've got some folks thinking about it uh, and they want to take advantage of those early registration discounts, uh, they need to grab those up uh, here real quickly because those are going to be be gone. And we've got some marvelous ones. You need to pull up the 2022 catalog and, and look at uh, the wish list there because I, I would like to go on almost every one of them. Uh, they look so, some of the speakers are going to be, well, all the speakers are going to be marvelous, but some just really uh, resonate with me. So I, I look, look forward to hearing that. So, so James, you, we, we got a chance to visit with uh, uh, the director general uh, from the Israel, from IMOT. Uh, we did. Got some updates with us for us. Uh, we do. Um, before I get to those, let's, I, I believe the team also has an update on of testimonials uh, from our groups there. And I saw Dave Bergerson had signed on to the webinar a little earlier and, and sent us a note. Uh, so, and he may be on in this package uh, video. So, This trip to Israel has been life-changing. EO has been wonderful in setting everything up. The travel has been safe, and everything we have seen and expressed has been life-changing. This is fantastic. Uh, don't worry about getting here. Everybody knows what they're doing. They take you through step-by-step step in the airport. There's nothing to worry about. The process, the protocol is wonderful. This trip has been by far the most amazing trip I've ever been on. I've learned far more than I thought I would. This is our first time in Israel. We have been amazed at how, how secure we feel, and how safe and how wonderful the trip has been. We have had a beautiful time at every site with enough time to visit each one at length and no rushing here and there. And EO has been wonderful in helping us to uh, rearrange flights that were canceled due to weather. And so we've had a great time. It's well worth it. I am renewed all over again. I was the guy from my church who most thought, oh, I'm not going. <laughs> but now I'm probably the happiest person that I did. I wish everybody in the world could take it. I really mean that. The trip has been amazing so far, only two days in, and the re almost two weeks left, and uh, you won't regret it. It's the trip of life. Uh, come to Israel. They treat you well. Everything is good. It was a great experience, and I'm glad I did it. It's been a great trip, so you should come if you get a chance. Okay. Um, we've had... Uh, I think now uh, close to 300 folks in October, uh, having made the pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And we have about 600 traveling in November. So um, the process is working well. Uh, groups have, have gone well. We've had our first groups go into Jordan uh, via land on extensions. Uh, and I think on the 1st of November, we've, we've, we've got groups that, are, that were to combine both countries. So... Uh, they'll be able to do that. So a lot of positive news. And if you saw me earlier, I was um, 
looking uh, down at uh, my phone because we just got the, some of the latest updates for individuals traveling uh, to the Holy Land. And it um, uh, basically we have the link now. So uh, if, if you have your, if you're up to date on your vaccines, and I'll explain what that is in a minute, uh, you can log into this link and uh, you will be able to um, uh, uh, receive a green pass and then you'll be able to enter the country as an individual. Uh, so uh, that uh, literally just got the, that link uh, here since we've been sitting here on the webinar. So that's exciting. Uh, so bottom line uh, for the Holy Land, uh, Israel's open, uh, tourism is increasing uh, and more countries are able to visit uh, the Holy Land. So let me, let me tell you, it, it seems like things fall into three groups. Uh, we just talked about individuals. So if you're an individual traveling, and I, I know there's a couple of you watching this webinar now that are anxious to go uh, individually for a couple different reasons, uh, that's going to be possible uh, if, as long as your vaccination is up to date. And Israel defines vaccination being up to date as um, you've either, you've had two shots of the vaccine, and if it's been more than 180 days, you need to have the booster shot. If it's within, if you and this is all from the return date of your trip. Uh, if it is, um, uh, if it has, if you've received your second shot of Moderna, Pfizer, or your first shot of, of J and J, and it's been less than 180 days, then you're okay. You're up to date. So that 180 day mark from when you had that second shot is is critical to do to whether you have to have a booster or not. Good thing is also Tom that the boosters obviously. Are, um, are now much more widely available since even since our last webinar. So that's uh, certainly uh, good news. Um, also, if you've had COVID in the last six months and have a certain, uh, a certain certificate saying that and there are certain rules with that, you can also enter without, um, um, I think without even having the vaccine, but that's gonna be in the last six months. So there's some stipulations uh, there. Um, so, uh, individuals, there's a pathway forward uh, for you all. Uh, and groups are falling now into two categories. Uh, if everyone is up to date on their vaccinations, as I attempted to just define, uh, and everyone can apply and get the, um, get the green pass through this portal, you do that 48 hours before you travel, get the green pass, you're able to enter. If everyone in a group traveling uh, is, has that, then Really, it's, it's very, very similar to just entering as you used to. Obviously, you guys still have to get the PCR tests and things. Um, so PCR tests before you go, PCR test uh, on the return, uh, and then also uh, PCR test on, on arrival. But if you've up to date on the boosters, it, it pretty much appears you won't have to do the serological uh, test anymore. Um, so really pays to have the booster if you're going to Israel or you're up to date on your vaccines, uh, depending which case you would fall into. If a group traveling has some that are up to date on their vaccinations and uh, some that uh, are, have not had the booster and really need the booster, then they will follow the same rules as before. Those who aren't up to date on the vaccines will have to get a, 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 a PCR test every 72 hours once they're there. So Again, it really pays to um, have the vaccines uh, or be up to date on your vaccination for COVID. Uh, there's, uh, if, if you've not had the vaccine and not had COVID very, very recently, there's still no pathway forward on that uh, uh, going uh, to the Holy Land. So um, it seems a little more complicated. I think it's, uh, it's easier uh, uh, to do that. Um, and the, the other important thing is if you're getting a booster shot to travel uh, for Pfizer, that is, uh, you have to have had that seven days before you arrive. Moderna, Johnson & Johnson are 14 days before you arrive. So don't wait till the day before uh, to get it because uh, you will be treated as you're not up to date. Um, so, Tom, I, that is, um, I'll put my I headphones back in. Uh, that is where we stand now with that. So it um, groups have been going well, and our um, we we seem to have a little a much more clarity on this. It, it seems like they will begin uh, on November first. Uh, this uh, new plan, since they have that website now up and ready to go. 
Great, great, James. That's that's good to hear. We we do have one question that came up, and I think you answered it, but I just want to make sure. Uh, what about people who had COVID in 2020 uh, and don't want or plan to get the vaccine? Right now, you say if it hasn't been a recent COVID uh, recovery, it, there's no way forward at that right moment. That is correct. The, the COVID has to been within the last six months of the return date. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. So, well, that's good news. Uh, it was encouraging to be with uh, the director general and, and his team and, and hear them talk. And they got to hear what our concerns were. I, uh, I really appreciate that opportunity. That was uh, good. And, and glad to hear about the link. That's, that's exciting. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. The, the link is up. So, so you've been you've been uh, doing a bit of travel uh, while you're there. Um, before I go back and talk to everybody about the fams, we'll, we'll we'll share a little bit about this. So you were doing part of the Camino. You went walking. I I, I went walking. Um, I, my son and I went to uh, to Portugal uh, and and obviously Spain uh, just ahead of this cruise. I had wanted to do the Camino for a long time, but typically my schedule doesn't allow uh, just to go off and go hiking uh, for uh, at least a couple days. And Portugal is the only country in Western Europe I had not been to. So that's sort of been on the bucket list for me. Uh, so we really had three objectives um, traveling. And you see a little Camino footage here uh, as they're showing. But we had three objectives to get to Fatima to uh, to do the Camino and uh, and then... Uh, visit uh, some more of Portugal, the Douro Valley. And um, so we were able to get to Fatima. I've been arranging Roman Catholic groups to go to Fatima for almost 30 years now. Um, and uh, that was a good experience uh, there. And, uh, you know, relatively new site, those apparitions happened during World War I. So it's been a little more than 100 years uh, there. So um, interesting to go to Fatima. And then uh, we did two days on the Camino, and those are the two days that uh, are on our Camino fam trip next year. So we went from uh, Arzua to uh, Pedrozo, and then Pedrozo to the Camino. So we started at 2 p.m. on last Thursday, and uh, we hoofed it uh, a good 12 miles uh, the first in, in a limited amount of time. And, uh, and then we did the, about 13 miles the next day into Santiago. So, um, it, it was, it was a good experience and you saw a little bit there, there you can see us uh, starting out and almost, almost to the end. Um, uh, take good walking, take good hiking boots, uh, for that. Uh, we, I went in my running shoes and that wasn't my most intelligent decision of all time. Uh, so, um, and we parked our car there, and we actually we actually did the backpack thing on the on the fam trip next year. You're not going to carry your toiletries and all that like we did, so uh, that that'll be much uh, nicer. You won't have 25 pounds strapped to you um, as you go. Um, uh, just beautiful weather, beautiful scenery. Um, we we overnight in uh, Opadrozo, had dinner at an albergue, um, and um, you know just. So I got a feel for the whole thing, and uh, and then we went into Santiago. I think you saw the, I think you saw the pictures of the cathedral there, Tom. I can tell you that, you know, stones that I'm sure have been there hundreds of years in that in that uh, plaza. Boy, the, sitting on those stones never felt so good after 25 miles in about 25 hours. <laughs> I can tell you. So, um, it um, and then and from there I, we we stayed several nights in. Uh, uh, in Porto, Portugal, and we went up the Douro Valley. Porto is just a fantastic city. I, I, I will go back there anytime. Um, and the Douro Valley, I, I've never seen vineyards to that magnitude um, there. And uh, they're showing a little. They're showing a little Porto now on the screen, as you can see. Just a gorgeous, uh, really a gorgeous city. Very clean. People very nice. Um, we visited the the port wine cellars uh, in Porto, and uh, that was fascinating to see some of the. Uh, some of the the barrels of uh, barrels and bottles of wine from some of it, 70, 80 years old. So, um, and, and then we drove out the uh, Douro Valley uh, just to get a sense of where our, our the Douro River cruise goes. And uh, 
vineyards, wineries, I, I don't know, there must've been a hundred wineries out there and just vineyards everywhere. Um, so you, you're, seeing, you're seeing a little picture there in Regula, which is uh, on the itinerary and uh, one of the locks, uh, you'll, you'll see the ship going through. So um, really a beautiful area. I, I was so impressed with Portugal. We finished on Sunday in Lisbon and, uh, uh, and visited that uh, spectacular city. And um, it'll be home of World Youth Day for the Roman Catholics. And uh, the Pope will be there in the summer of 2023. Uh, so um, a great time uh, in Portugal. And Portugal is one of those countries which is, I think, 80, they're 86, 87 percent vaccinated. Uh, so very, very safe country uh, when it comes to uh, COVID. And Tom, I, one, I, you know, I, I sort of have special favorite desserts in different parts of the world. And I, I found a new one in Portugal. I think they're going to put a picture of it up here. Um, here, and it's called Nata. Um, and there you can see I'm, I'm holding it. Um, and, wow, you know, it's a custard, it's a custard filled pie. And anything with custard in it is just a favorite of mine. And this recipe is uh, from the 1700s, so it's, it is the original. So only two people in the world know the recipe of it, and boy, that that hot custard pie was fantastic. It looks delicious. It looks delicious. It looks like it ri might rival kanafi for me. And I, you know how much I love that. So, uh, yep, yep. It, it was it was wonderful. We've had, so we've had one more question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Go ahead. We've had one question pop up here uh, from a specific group, uh, and maybe uh, you can answer this one. Uh, they're traveling November the 26th uh, to December 9th, have people who can't get their boosters until November 12th and 14th. So they will have to get their boosters or else submit to testing every 72 hours, correct? That is correct. And now it's going to it's going to depend on they have Pfizer or Moderna or and Johnson and Johnson. The so if they, if they if they have Pfizer, then it's only a week before departure. So okay. the 12th and 14th are going to be fine to get their fine. booster shots. They'll be they'll be fine. The 14th would not be fine for a 26th departure if they had Moderna or Johnson and Johnson. Great, great. Well, gosh, James, the, the sky changing behind you is beautiful. Uh, so jealous. Uh, seeing you're looking at that, it looks gorgeous. And glad you're having a great cruise. Uh, we are. So we're looking forward to the rest of it. Yeah. And uh, can't, can't wait for the new protocols to all take effect. And uh, great to hear that we've got so many people willing to travel and wanting to travel. So uh, it's, it's exciting to hear uh, that that people are actually getting out and moving around again. So in order to help you do that, folks, um, we got some fam who we want to tell you about, remind you of. Uh, we have our Holy Land fam uh, familiarization trip, as you know, uh, that's going to be on January the 10th of 2022. Um, that one's coming up. The registrations for that will end on November the 10th. So time's running out. If you're thinking about this one, uh, you need to get registered uh, ASAP because we're going to close the Registrations out for that. We've uh, really got good numbers on that. Really excited about that. Uh, I had mentioned to Paul about our choir leader fam. Uh, that's coming up. You can see that there on the, the screen. Uh, Registration is still open for that. Uh, so if you have some folks you think might be interested, uh, this would be the time to move them forward. Uh, and we've got Croatia. Uh, we, we've got that fam come up. First time to us to take a Croatia fam. So I just thought for sure everyone would be just lined up to go on that one. I've been looking at my schedule to see if that's going to be possible uh, or not. Uh, James talked about the, uh, the Camino uh, that he just got back from. Uh, that fam walking tour is going to be coming up next October. Uh, so it gives you time to get in shape if you want to do that one. Because when I saw Jimmy's picture there, James, pop up in front of the cathedral, that looked like a strained first grade smile that he had there. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I was I was afraid I was going to carry Jimmy those last five kilometers. <laughs> yeah, that he, he looked like, oh, this, I'm smiling for this picture, but I don't know why I'm smiling. So, uh, so uh, and Jimmy's in good shape, I, I know. So we're 
excited about yeah, Jim. Uh, Jim's in good shape. He was questioning the wisdom of, of that plan of uh, 25 <laughs> miles in 20, 25 hours. Yeah, that probably wasn't your smoothest move, Pop, uh, on that one. Yeah. He had on his hike, he had on his running shoes also, didn't he? Uh, he did, and, and I can I cannot stress enough: do not wear running shoes to do the Camino. Yeah. Okay, that's good for anybody who's out there thinking about that. So, uh, we got our Grease Fam coming up, uh, in uh, November of next year. So a little bit over a year out, uh, and I leave uh, in a few days uh, to go for this Grease Fam. It's coming up next Wednesday. Uh, I'll be leaving to take a group to Greece. We've got a a good group and a couple of folks who are on the boat. Uh, the ship with James right now will be joining me there in increase next week. So looking forward to that. And, and then we've got uh, our uh, couple that's still working on our England uh, Wesley fam uh, and our Turkey fam. Uh, both of those will be coming up in the fall of 2022. So we'll have more details as those come. We've got a couple more working uh, still developing that we're hoping that uh, will happen. We've, we've also got a new domestic tour uh, that I think Shelby might pop up for here called God and Country. Uh, it's in Washington, D.C. for next October. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in that, uh, that's up available to you right now. It's uh, an easy one to get to. I think you'll enjoy that. Uh, Washington, D.C. is a marvelous city to visit. I always enjoy uh, going there. Uh, and of course, we're still taking registrations for uh, our celebration cruise in January. Uh, it leaves the 24th of January. Uh, so from Tampa, so it's easy to get in and out of Tampa. So we would in, encourage you to, to look at that. We'll be, uh, I have a little bit more information for you in that for just a second. Uh, I mentioned at the top of the, uh, of the webinar here that we had um, our first ever uh, Blue Gullet uh, trip. Uh, so these are some folks who, who uh, went on a, 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 an experience that I hope to have someday. So. I'm going to go ahead and let Shelby roll uh, and John roll the, the package here, let you see that. Good day, Jim and Jan. Uh, so glad to see you here. Uh, for those of you watching us today, uh, this is uh, Dr. Jim Hedrick and Dr. Jan Lance. Uh, they're uh, friends of mine, actually, from Kentucky. And uh, this all kind of started out, Jim, uh, because I got to go on a fam trip to Turkey and you saw my pictures on Facebook and said, I want to go. It's true. Yeah. yeah. So, so folks, you never know, putting those pictures on Facebook actually has some benefits sometime and other than just let you brag about where you are. So, so we're, we're really excited that, uh, that you guys are here. So Jim and Jan just got back from Turkey. They and two other couples uh, did one of our small group trips uh, based upon the experience that they saw that I was having there. And, and they modified that. So tell us a little bit, uh, both of you, or either one of you, about what, what major sites you saw. What were the great big overarching kind of things that were, were there for you? Well, clearly, um, when we get to Istanbul, that's just an exciting city with, with wonderful venues to visit. We saw the Blue Mosque and, and uh, the Spice Market and it is an exciting place to be, and we felt very welcomed, very safe, which I think is important. We felt safer there than we do in Louisville. <laughs> and we felt safer because of COVID, too, because at this time, 83% of their population has been fully vaccinated, and their great adherence of mask wearing and social distancing and they're very respectful of, of Americans. I felt as safe there as I would feel anywhere. We, we then traveled to Cappadocia and had the opportunity to see their wonderful landscapes, took a terrific balloon ride, and uh, stayed in a cave hotel, which was a true highlight for us. We also had an, an opportunity to eat much of the uh, local foods and the food on this whole trip was simply remarkable the variety and the amount and i don't want to tell you how much the scale said that i gained on this trip we'll move right on <laughs> to our our next part we uh flew then to bodrum and boarded a gullet 
for six people and the whole experience, the food and the welcome from that crew was simply remarkable to me. And uh, we had just a terrific time looking at some of the ruins. The boat was, uh, it had four cabins. Uh, it could uh, take eight people. There are four crew members and uh, it's a, a two-masted sailboat. In the back, it has a, a table around which we ate almost every meal. On the front deck, there are these marvelous lounging beds that uh, are, are great for sunning and, and a seating area to be up front while you're traveling. Um, the rooms on the boat are fascinating. Each room has its own bathroom, um, and uh, we just thoroughly enjoyed being able to kind of determine what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go. And it was a, just a really relaxing time, but a time also that we could explore if we wanted to go ashore. It's ruined all future cruises for us. <laughs> it, it's, it's hard to understand what it's like to have somebody at your beck and call all of the time. And the, the whole concept that EO is approaching to have small group tours, we think is very wise. Every morning the captain would ask, uh, or, or our guide would ask, now is there anything special you want to do today? Um, you do not get that on any other uh, cruise or excursions. The, in, the personal attention and the level of detail that you can get into far outweighs anything else so that your experience in every minute of your trip is, is utilized in the manner in which you want to explore a new, a new country, a new venue. You can say, I want to slow down and not do as much, but then you're there and you really want to experience every single thing that you possibly can see. So the gullet gave us an opportunity to have a bit of a rest. In, in Turkey, you see what the Christians had to endure by uh, where they lived, uh, where the caves that they lived in to escape the Roman persecution. Um, and it was very meaningful for us in that way also. You know that the persecutions that that Paul went through and, and, and some of these early folks and and yet to to recognize the places where he was speaking to the people and trying to send them message to the people of Ephesus, etc., is it, it just puts a contextual framework around what you've read and studied through your whole life. But I have to tell you that going up in that balloon and watching the sunrise over those uh, fabulous fairy chimneys um, and, and seeing some of God's handiwork as the sun is rising and, and shining on your balloon. I don't think I smiled more than that hour and a half I was on the balloon. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you just were in awe. I mean, it just was an amazing trip. And I've told everybody that I've seen since, they got to go to Turkey. I mean, it is a great country. Um, the people, again, were so friendly. I mean, I think it's probably one of the friendliest countries we've ever been or felt welcomed by the people more than any other country we've been to. So we just adored it and um, have said to you already, okay, we're ready to travel with small tours again. What do you have in mind for us? And the other two couples that were with us have immediately said, we're in. So yes, you have ruined it for us. We think we will be doing a lot of this. So James, that, that's that's our taste there of what the gullet is like. You still up yeah, for it? Yeah. I no, I'm still up for it. Um, and, and the classic voyage on the blue, the blue voyage is from Bodrum, which they mentioned, uh, around to Marmaris. And Marmaris is, you know, is ten miles this way from Rhodes. So so we're right here in that area. Nice. Well. 
it, it looked like a great troop, and I know how excited they were when they got back. So we're, we're really pleased they had a good trip. And we do have uh, our small group, uh, EOX division. Uh, remember that, we six to 16 uh, people mm -hmm. uh, in that group. We also can do, uh, you know, individual travel through uh, our FIT division. So remember, uh, those are venues to you. We'd love to help you plan out uh, your next, next trip. So our next webinar is going to be uh, November the 9th, 11 a.m., this time, uh, it would be live from Greece. Uh, Drexel and I, oh, excuse me, uh, will be there. So we're looking uh, forward to that. Uh, and then we'll be featuring Ireland. Uh, James will be bringing us up to date on the Holy Land and the latest things that are going on there uh, and the Ireland feature. So uh, we want you to make plans now to join us again uh, on the 9th. Um, we really appreciate all of you being here today. Uh, hope that you have learned something. and. We'll be here to help any way we can. Send us a text message, an email, whatever. Uh, look forward to being with you again real soon. Thanks, Mark, Paul. Thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. Uh, for James over there and all of his background, true. I know uh, Dale, Jimmy, and Drexel are kind of in the background over there helping things happen. They are. We really appreciate that. They did that. a great job. Yeah, we really, really appreciate that. And, and Ryan, Shelby, John, and all the crew back in Lakeland uh, for making this possible. Appreciate it. We want to end here uh, with a promo for uh, the Celebration Cruise that will be uh, sailing out of Tampa uh, in January. So until we see you then, God bless. Go in peace. Don't leave before the video plays. Bye now. Invited to join Educational Opportunities Tours for the 13th Annual Celebration Cruise with guest speaker Bishop Sharma D. Lewis and guest musician Jeremy Hearn aboard the Celebrity Constellation. This 11-night cruise experience in the Americas and Caribbean with missions excursions offered in select ports of call departs January of 2022. During your days at sea, enjoy keynote sessions by Bishop Sharma D. Lewis resident bishop of the Richmond Episcopal area. Jeremy Hearn will lead musical worship and provide special performances. After unpacking once and with most meals included, you are sure to enjoy your time cruising. With refined enhancements such as modernized staterooms, elevating design concepts, and technology across the ship, you won't want for comfort or convenience on board this luxurious cruise liner. Visit Georgetown, the capital island of the Grand Caymans. The traditional Caribbean flavors with colorful wooden houses and artisan workshops will surround you as you explore. Enjoy two days surrounded by cobbled streets, blossoming bougainvillea, and bursts of color in Cartagena, Colombia, one of Latin America's most photogenic cities. As the world's largest duty-free port, Cologne, Panama offers abundant shopping. It also represents a gateway to numerous ecological sites, including Chagres National Park. You also have a chance to tour the world-famous Panama Canal. Costa Rica has staunchly advocated nature conservation for years. Exquisite nature preserves throughout the country, particularly in Puerto Limón, allow the visitor rare exposure to virgin rainforests and bird sanctuaries. Cozumel is a famous cruise ship called located directly off the coast of Playa del Carmen. Museums, a Mayan excavation, snorkeling, and delicious foods all boast this island's luxurious atmosphere. EO's exclusive mission excursions will introduce you to local ministries involved in caring for the poor, lonely, and otherwise forgotten people of Cozumel, Panama, and Costa Rica. Don't miss Educational Opportunities 13th Annual Celebration Cruise on board the Celebrity Constellation, departing January 2022. Call your local tour host or book your stateroom today at eo.travel forward slash celebration cruise or by calling 800-247-0017. Bye, everyone.